Anton sits at his sunny desk, hunched, using a mouse with his right hand and pointer finger. My name is Anton and I'm from Ukraine. He types with his right pointer finger. As a freelance developer living with cerebral palsy, tasks like typing and speaking can be difficult, which limits my ability to communicate effectively. My first laptop only had DOS, and there were no accessibility features available. To type a parenthesis, I had to press Shift plus 9, but I could only use one finger, so I had to hold Shift with my nose. If you try working like that, you'll quickly understand why I couldn't afford to fix my code many times. Code scrolls by on the screen. Text can compress a vast amount of information into a small set of symbols. I assess which ones are necessary for communication with ChatGPT and which ones I can omit entirely. For me, it's not the power of the language, but the ability to make it short. Anton meticulously types code. AI has played a significant role in simplifying complex physical actions and enhancing skills that are challenging for me due to my disability. AI-generated code scrolls by on the screen. Main title, Coding Accessibility, Anton. Anton, holding Lyra's arm, walks in a courtyard between Soviet-era buildings. Title, Ukraine 2021. The yellow and blue Ukrainian flag flies above a bridge. We see some peaceful scenes of a Ukrainian city. I realized early on that I was different from others and encountered discrimination and inequality at a young age. Even though I was a capable student, the lack of information about the experiences and lives of people with disabilities played a significant role. At that time, I was torn between stereotypes about disabled individuals and my own abilities. Anton Mirochenko, software developer, mentor. Anton says, my parents bought me a book about QBasic. And I managed to learn that language in one month. So I started to learn more and more programming languages. I was about 14 when I created my first program. Anton's first program was a game uh, like usual platformer with balls, but it was funny. And my first trying was to draw something for his games. Lyra Mirochenko, artist Anton's sister. Later on, it became easier for me to write code as I learned about autocomplete. I am not satisfied with just quantity, but also quality. That's why I continue to search for new ways to optimize my workflow. Anton's GitHub page. Gradually, I learned Git and started using private repositories. My first programming job was at 25, and my first clients were found through social networks. They saw how I helped other people and gave me a job. I always inform my clients about my disability. Moreover, I present it as an advantage because it provides me with extensive experience in solving complex and unconventional problems. Home video of Anton lifting weights years ago. From childhood, he always trying physically to get better, like level up. In the morning, he go on a cold shower outside, on a garden, <laughs> yay. He work out in gym. He always trying to get his soul and body more strong. Newspaper articles flash the word Ukraine in the headline, and a voice from NPR informs us of the start of the war. That's what it sounded like in Kiev this morning as Ukrainians faced down the reality of a Russian invasion. Russia started bombing Ukrainian air bases and other military installations around the country when the war started. I was focused on becoming independent because I saw how challenging life could be. But the situation in Ukraine became critical, and I was forced to leave. It was my 23rd birthday, and Anton came to my room at 5 a.m. and said, the war is started. Happy birthday, sister. For me, it was very, how to say, strange morning. The first phrase I uttered was, Hey, sister, happy birthday. You know what? We're heading to Slovakia soon. Start packing bags. Oh, by the way, a war has started. Bombed out buildings and a helicopter flies overhead. I faced difficulties with sarcastic humor, and that time was no exception. Aerial view of a town, Slovakia 2023. Smokestacks in Soviet-era buildings mixed with medieval-style ones in a small cityscape. Camera focuses on a restored building with a park-like space in front. Evgeny enters the building through a modern automatic door. Evgeny and I have been friends for many years. Several years ago, he moved to Slovakia. 
partly because of Evgeny, we made the decision to move to Slovakia as quickly as possible after the war started. Evgeny Milotsov, software developer. I was starting my career and I just tried to find online some tutors who can help me. And Anton I was one of those. I just wrote to him, asked if he can help me for free because I haven't had money. And then we just started communicating. He helped me with some homeworks. He tried to explain in writing what's going on in the code, how I can make things better. Usually I wanted him just to give me an answer. And he's like, no, <laughs> you should come to the answer by yourself and not like just me doing the homework for you. As much as he can, he tried to help Anton because uh, Anton like mentor for him and he find for us uh, apartment. So he take care and help us very much. Anton and Yevgeny work together at a computer terminal on a coding project inside a co-working space, exterior of Anton and Lyra's apartment building. My life didn't change much in Slovakia because even in Ukraine, I had a very basic lifestyle because almost all day I work on my own projects or I work on freelance projects. I can literally delve into a problem for days and nights, reading scientific articles, searching for any possible ways to at least partially solve the problem. When you hire him to work on a project, you can be sure it will be done like uh, the best way it can possibly be done. But at the same time for him, it's not the best thing to have this. Trying to do everything perfect in IT, it's rarely possible. Developers should occasionally limit themselves. Trying to accomplish tasks with limited access to external libraries or tools can foster creativity and encourage developers to find alternative solutions by experiencing the frustrations and limitations firsthand. It is crucial to promote information about disabled developers among other disabled persons. Anton and Lyra sit outside on a bench near a busy street. Lyra fills a kettle with water and sets it to boil. We've spent a lot of time together. He pay for a living for food, such things, and I take care of house, and I made my art, so we can, how to say, live in some kind of symbiosis. Lyra brings Anton a cup of tea at his desk. For me, waving hand coding a little bit similar. In coding and in waving, you're writing the new line, trying to figure it out how it will be and how we'll look final result. Lyra sits on the floor, a makeshift loom on her lap, weaving yarn into a piece of art. Anton slowly types code into ChatGPT. When I first heard about GitHub Copilot, I was doubtful that it could handle such a complex task as coding. But I was surprised at how helpful and relevant the suggestions it gave me were. Sometimes, it even seemed like it could read my mind because it would suggest code that I hadn't thought of yet. Although this particular aspect of AI may not be widely discussed, it possesses the power to counter my pessimism by presenting optimistic alternatives, helping me overcome mental challenges. Both of us, we are hard workers, and it's nice to have someone who you can speak to. Sometimes we have evenings when I just come, there is Lera, Anton, we can just chill out, have some drinks, talk. Anton, Lyra, and Evgeny sit on comfy chairs, chatting and drinking in a sunny yard. Life is not always easy. And sometimes you're like, ah, I have some problems, like I can't finish this, I can't do that. For me personally, having Anton around really pushes me. It motivates me to like, pushes me forward. A few years ago, I realized that I could hide forever, or I could gradually start opening myself up to the world, publishing my code, and striving to make it potentially open and accessible. While it's possible that no one may read my code, the mere thought that someone could read it compels me to write it more responsibly and cleanly. Anton says, with AI, with Copilot, I can code my intention more precisely.
I can now not only write the code itself but also detailed comments, documentation, and project descriptions. Previously, I physically couldn't afford to do this. I firmly believe that AI has enormous potential to make a positive impact on the lives of people with disabilities. Through my active engagement in studying machine learning and conducting research, I aim to harness the power of AI for the betterment of our lives. It has truly assisted me in pushing beyond my limits. Sun touches Anton's face as he smiles. His blue eyes sparkle. GitHub logo. Credits roll.